In this video, we're going to talk about vector components. A vector is a measurement that includes both a magnitude and a direction. And we usually represent vectors with an arrow that are at a certain angle. So this arrow that we have here is about 7.5 centimeters in length, and it's at an angle of about 50 degrees from the horizontal. Now notice how I didn't just say 50 degrees, I included a reference point. So I said 50 degrees from the horizontal. It's always important when we're dealing with vectors to include that reference point. Quite often in physics we are required to break vectors up into the different parts that make up that vector. So when I'm looking at this vector here, I could say that I have a point right there at the end of this vector. That's about uh, 6 across the x-axis here and then up almost 5 on the y-axis. And so I could do something like this to describe that point that's right there. And so this vector is actually taking that point and then connecting it down to the zero point there. And so sometimes it's more useful to actually have the parts that make up the vector rather than the vector itself. So to determine the two sides that make up this vector, you can see it's basically a right angle triangle that we've drawn here. And so we have to remember some things that we learned uh, in math class. So first of all, we need to remember the Pythagorean theorem. And then we have to remember SOHCAHTOA. Those are those trig functions where we have sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's, so let's see how they apply to our right angle triangle that we have right here. So just as a review, our Pythagorean theorem uh, has the formula c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And we'll label our tri uh, triangle here. c is what we call the hypotenuse there. And then we have side a and side b. And so if we want to find the length of side c, and we know the length of side uh, a and b here, we just plug them into our equation here. And so this would become c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. I took the square root of both sides to get rid of that uh, squared there on the c squared. Okay, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Let's take a look at these trig functions now. This first one is, stands for the sine of theta, and that's a Greek letter that represents basically any of the angles here that we don't know. So there's two unknown angles. There's this one here and this one here. Down here we have a 90 degree angle. And so we have the sine of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite side in relation to this angle. So if we look at which side is opposite to that, it would be the one straight across. So this side over top of the length of the hypotenuse, which is right here. And so it's based off of those sides. Okay, the next one is the cosine um, of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Again, and this is related to theta, one of these angles here. And so the adjacent side is the side that's going to be beside or adjacent to this angle. So here's our angle. The, the side that is adjacent to it would be right down here. Now if we're looking at this angle, if this was our theta here, uh, then the adjacent side would be this one. That would be the one beside, and so this uh, side over here would be the opposite. Hypotenuse is still the same right there. Okay, the last one here is going to be uh, the tangent of theta is going to be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And again, that's in relation to uh, one of these angles here. And so what these allow us to do is that if we know the angle, if we know one of these angles, and we know one of the sides, so for example, if I was going to use this tan of theta right here, if I knew theta and I knew the opposite side, I could find how long this adjacent side is right here. So why don't we try this by looking back at our vector here. So here's what we know about this, uh, this vector. We know that it's 7.5 centimeters, and then we know it's at an angle of 50 degrees. And so I want to find what is this length and what is that length there in blue. And so we can use our 
trig functions here to find those different sides. And here are those uh, trig functions just so we can remind ourselves. So we can use the first two here uh, to so solve for these unknowns. So if I look at this angle, we have the blue side is the one that's opposite to the angle. So I can use the sine function. And then the green one is adjacent, so I can use the cosine one here. So let's start with the sine. Now I need to manipulate this a little bit because I uh, want to solve for the opposite side. So I need to move the hypotenuse uh, over to the other side here. So I can multiply both sides by the hypotenuse and that will cancel it over here. So if I do this, multiply both sides and do the same on the other side here. Multiply by the hypotenuse. Now we have isolated the opposite side. So let me rewrite that here. So I have the hypotenuse times the sine of 50 degrees is going to be equal to that opposite side. So this is 7.5 centimeters, that's the hypotenuse. And so when we do the math here, punch that in on your calculator, we get 5.75 centimeters, and that's the blue side there. So for the green side, we will take this one right here, and I'm gonna rearrange that to solve for the adjacent side. So I'll have the adjacent side is gonna be equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of 50 degrees. And again, the hypotenuse is going to be 7.5, so I can plug that into my calculator and I will end up with a value of 4.82 centimeters. And so that is the green side. So these are the two components of the red vector there. So that's what I did. Um, by splitting it into its components here, I just basically took the x and the y portions of that arrow. And that is vector components.